where do my files live? So in Fusion 360, you can find your designs or files, if you want to think of it that way, over here in the data panel. And you can see I've opened my recent data. I can see all these different designs. And I can even choose to right click and share these out. So these files could be shared remotely so someone else on a different machine can just click this link and open it. So are my files on the machine? So because Fusion 360 is what I maybe would call a hybrid system where all of the files or designs are backed up in the cloud, which would allow you to access them from effectively any device anywhere, it's also caching files locally or keeping some information data local so that that would allow you to work offline that even though you may not have internet access, you can still work on these files and save them and update them. So what's on the top row in Fusion 360? First, you have the application toolbar. You have uh, the data panel, then you have the file menu, which allows you to create export, 3D print, and you can even open files in the web browser and view all of your designs um, out on the web. The plus sign allows you to create a brand new design. Notification Center shows any cloud solves running and can even offer some quick tips. And then extensions. These are custom capabilities that are offered from Autodesk. Um, most of these are uh, paid additional features and capabilities. The question mark will open up uh, the help menu and other helpful learning libraries like the get started and self-paced learning along with what's new. Great resource for learning all the new features. And then click your name here to access your account. You can see your Autodesk account as well as preferences on how everything behaves within Fusion 360. Thanks to Kati for sponsoring this Fusion 360 beginner series. If, if you're looking for an expert when it comes to Autodesk products, whether that's moving engineering data to the cloud or getting one-on-one -on -one support, be sure to check out Kativ. Their link is down below. So what about using CAM or render or simulation? So that's talking about workspaces and workspaces are all these different behaviors within Fusion 360. Design is, I would maybe say like the core of Fusion 360 where you can create 3D models, you can sculpt, which is you can think of as working with clay, organic shapes, uh, you can do surface modeling, you can do uh, you know mesh when it comes to working with STLs and 3D prints, sheet metal, plastic design, and, and further. And to take a step further, like for example, when you're in a sketch menu, this is going to be contextual. So that when I start a sketch, you notice this design menu became sketch uh, entities and tools along with constraints and other things that everything that rel uh, relates to working in a sketch. And once you're beyond that, once I you know sketch a shape, add dimensions, finish that sketch, now I'm back to that create menu where I can add 3D or solid geometry to that sketch. Now let's look at the other workspaces. Render for photo realistic images of your design, less of a cartoon. Animations for creating assembly instructions. Generative design, this is where you're using AI to create uh, new concepts, new design ideas. Simulation, using finite element analysis to investigate designs and their expected behavior and even potential failure modes. Manufacturing, where you can create different tool paths, whether it's for a mill or a lathe. And drawings, where you can create 2D specifications with dimensions and everything. And what about the pull downs? In the solid pull downs, for example, I'm in solid, so now I've got additional pull downs for the create menu. This is where I can find my kind of full menu of different solid extrude features I can use, um, as well as these uh, solid prisms and other features here. And then, you know, for example, the automate, the modify, you'll notice a full menu for creating fillets, adding chamfers, removing material, changing the, the current model. What about shortcuts? If I'm a true beginner, should I be learning shortcuts? 
So for beginners, it can be hard to figure out what you even need to do or what it's called. And so I definitely would encourage you to go through, you know, a beginner, some beginner tutorials where you'll be introduced to these key features like extrude, revolve, sweep, and loft. And you'll learn about the basics of sketching, right? So when you're doing that, then you can learn the basic tools of line and rectangle and those things when you're doing your, your sketching and you'll learn the basics of constraints. I think once you, you know, have some of that uh, basic understanding of Fusion 360, I would encourage you to learn one shortcut for sure, which is the, the S key. S as in shortcut, S as in Sam. And it is contextual. And for example, when I'm at this high level, at the assembly level, I'm seeing some, some very basic things like start a sketch or uh, do some basic features. When I do S key, when I'm in a sketch, you'll notice these are sketch entities or sketch shortcuts. So, and this can be easily modified. You can add shortcuts here. I love this. And the one thing I love here is this search. I love using this. So I could do this for any search of any sketch shortcut where I'm at. So I could look for spline. I could look for a fillet. I could, and you can see it's showing me other, even the solid fillets. So this search is really intelligent and powerful. I love this. I wish all CAD tools had that. I love that search. How do I create my own shortcuts? If you find any tool that you definitely want to add to your shortcuts, for example, the ellipse or polygon, let's say we want to do this polygon and I find the three dots here to the right, click on it and you can pin this to your shortcuts. And so now when I have the S, you'll notice it pops up right here in my shortcuts menu. Can you explain all the stuff that's on the main screen? Yep. All right. So we have the canvas and this is where the 3D design usually is hanging out that you can change your camera angle. You can zoom in and out. You can rotate. And if you look at the left, you're going to see the browser. And the browser is where the sketches are going to live, the bodies will live, everything that kind of pertains to each design file that maybe even lives within an assembly in this example. Views, I like to think of this as almost like pre-saved camera angles. And an easy way to think of it, or easy way to access it over here is the changing from isometric top view to the right view, just clicking on it over in the view cube. Should I really use the view cube? I love using rotate with my mouse to zoom in and out and rotate, but I love this view cube for quickly jumping between views, changing 90 degrees, rotating it, going back to isometric. I love the view cube. And explain the stuff at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, so we have the navigation bar. Um, you know, for example, you can change between different types of orbits. You can choose the look at, which will look straight at a face. Pan allows you to move the object or 3D object around on the screen, zoom in and out, fit. I love the fit command where I'm off the screen. I'll use that F for fit or F6 by default. I'll hit fit and that fits it to the screen. You can turn your uh, grids on and off. You can even change if you want to see four different views at once or multiple views at once. What if I want to view my design in line mode? Okay, so that that's on the display settings. And if you look at visual style, you can change from shaded down to something like wireframe. And that will show it um, in line mode, if you want to think of it that way. And we can show it with or without the hidden edges. You can see those hidden edges being displayed. And then you can jump back to, you know, more of a solid display. I like the grid in sketching. How do I turn that on? Okay, so this is definitely a preference thing. Some people love this grid. Some people don't really care for it. And if you click down at this grid setting here, you can show uh, grid settings or snap to grid. And I can turn that sketch grid on and off here in the palette, as well as even the you know ability to snap. When I like, look at my line command, it's snapping to each grid increment and you can even you know nerd out on the grid and set the increments how big you want it to be um, and i even have a full video just on the grid how do i see every step that i've done to make a design yeah let's look at this part so in this part this was a series of sketches and features if we look down at the bottom you'll see what's called 
the timeline. And this is where you can see it step by step. You can drag this timeline to quickly jump between what you've created, as well as you can even use this kind of toolbar to have it play it out step by step for you, jump from end to end, um, or jump from the very beginning all the way to the end, as well as being able to drag uh, to, to show uh, all those steps either live or one at a time. Let's look at an example where I start a brand new design, but I'm, I've turned off the capture design history, so do not capture. So now going forward, even though I'm sketching, I'm extruding, I'm revolving, adding sweeps, adding fillets, all types of steps and features, you'll notice it's going to add these in, but there's no timeline that's going to be editable or you know captured so that we can edit and change it in the past. You'll notice there's no right-click, edit feature, edit sketch. So it's going to behave differently than maybe what you're used to. But this can be a way to simplify the design. Or if it's an import, you don't have any features or design history. And so you're, you're now going to be starting going forward. And maybe perhaps that's where you want to capture design history. And now I want to capture any additional changes, any additional uh, features that I add like a fillet, a chamfer, or you know, new cuts and, and things like that. Hey, for more Fusion 360 videos, check out this playlist.